Okay guys, I'm going to cut a W in the surface of this wood and the first thing I need to do is uh, just kind of index my cutter right over top of the surface. Uh, just so I have a better vantage point when I enter the program coordinates in. Okay, I'm going to get this set up in the program and then we'll start. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load the part program which is right here and I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to take it offline and then I'm going to jog uh, over to the about where that W is because I don't want to I don't want it to be offset quite that far so I'm going to jog right about where I want it which is right about there that's good. Okay. Okay, we got our coordinates set up in the center of that W. And one thing I like to do just to just confirm um, position here is to make sure that tool is uh, referenced to the surface. Let me refocus this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is a G0. Z0. As you can see, that tip moved right to the surface of the wood. So I'm going to back off a little bit here and then start the program. Okay, I need to go to our program run and I have everything set up and it's okay. I have the feed rate at 10 inches per minute, which is very, very slow, but I'm just going slow at first because I'm not real familiar with the program or machining anything. Or so anyway, we'll go ahead and hit cycle start. It's asking for tool number two. Tool number two is in there. Hit cycle start again. Okay, sorry, I ran out of memory there. I had to delete a couple of things, but we came back. Uh, the whole part took a minute and 26 seconds, so you didn't miss much. So we'll clean it off and take a look. Okay, clean it off. Let's jog up a little bit and we'll take a look at the W. And there it is. This camera's not focusing. Let me see if I can get a better focus on it. Okay, that's a little bit better. You can see it's nice and crisp, and and uh, I set the tolerance to one thou, which which I could have gone higher. In fact, I did go higher, but I had to lower it because I'm just using the demo version of Mach 3, and and when I set the tolerance uh, too low, or I'm sorry, too high, the file part becomes too big for Mach the the demo program to run it. So anyway, I'm going to cut an M directly below it and we'll take a look at that okay first thing I need to do is uh, load the M file which is this one and I already have everything set up in here double check T2 yep everything looks good feed rate is also 10 on this one I just picked that the, the recommended feed rate is like couple hundred inches per minute but I'm just keeping it slow for now all right so cycle like start asking for tool two it's in there
clean this off and look at it. Okay, there it is. I stacked them right on top of each other so that center uh, island would kind of make a diamond. Now let's see if we can get a little closer. There it is. Okay, I'm just running the program again in the same spot, so it's not actually really cutting anything. But I thought you guys might want to see a, a backed out view of what it's doing. And you can see the program. G-code scrolling on the left, coordinates in the center. You have your part program following the where it's cutting. In addition to the computer control, we also have a manual control, so we can switch it back and forth. Right now it's in CNC mode. We'll switch it to manual. And it has a jog pendant. So we can uh, set our axis and our range of motion. And we can move everything around using the jog pendant. So. Definitely cool. Okay, to give you guys an idea of the resolution, um, I'm going to put the tool onto a gauge here, and each tick mark on the gauge is one thousandth of an inch. And I've measured when in the one step position. It takes 25 clicks to move one thousandth of an inch, which is about one seventy-fifth of the diameter of a hair. So, very, very high resolution. Okay, another nice thing about this mill is it's full enclosure, so it has all these doors around it that you can close, and it has two flood coolant nozzles which put out quite a bit of force as would normally be pointed at the tool when you're cutting with them but this enclosure captures all that coolant down into the to the coolant pan down down below and then recycles it so thanks for watching